Good morning, everybody. Well, summer is officially here, and you know what that means. Hot weather, thunderstorms, movie theaters booked solid with loud, obnoxiously shitty films. Oh, and baseball. I do love baseball. You know, I should probably go to a Suns game here in Hagerstown before the team packs up for good and leaves town forever and its abandoned ballpark becomes yet another neglected, dilapidated local eyesore. The following calls are taken from editions of Mail Call, printed in the Herald Mail from June 10th to June 21st, 2013, which can be read online in their entirety at www.herald-mail.com. First up from Clear Spring, I was just reading the marriage licenses in the newspaper, and I'm curious to find out, when a woman and a woman get married, how do they decide which name to take? And the same thing with a man, when two men get married, how do they decide which name, which last name to take as their main name? Maybe they both keep their own names. You know, the woman changing her name to the man's last name is just a sexist remnant of days gone by anyway. And sexist institutions don't work so well when both spouses are of the same sex. Of course, they're not much good when the spouses are of opposite sexes either, actually. Which is one of the main reasons why my wife kept her name when we got married. You know, I still get this swell of smug, enlightened liberal pride whenever I have to explain that to people. Another Sunday gone by, no calls, no visits. When you become elderly, the visits and the calls are fewer and farther between when you have a family. The older you get, the worse it gets. And also, I would say I probably had maybe about 25 calls or visits in the last couple of years on Sunday. I don't have time when I die. Mount Lena. No calls or visits from your family, but you seem so charming. A real barrel of laughs. I wonder what's kept them away. When these people, say 18 to 23 years of age, get in trouble with the law, why doesn't the judge prorate the sentence to, say, either four years in jail or two years in the armed services? Let them have a choice. Hagerstown. <laughs> yes, I'm sure the armed forces would love that, to have their ranks swelled with conscripted convicts they don't want and don't need. You know, it doesn't say much for your opinion of our military that you think turning it into an armed chain gang is a good idea. You know, I find this very strange. I talk to a lot of people during the week, and President Obama, as we all know, won the last election, but it seems that nobody voted for him. So what's happening here? How did he get in if nobody voted for him? I think the ones who voted for him just don't want to say, because they see the terrible job he's doing. Sharpsburg. Hmm... So, because none of the people you have personally spoken with says they voted for President Obama, you've concluded that all of the people who did vote for him are too ashamed to admit it because they all know what a terrible job he's doing. I can follow that logic. It's shit, but I could definitely follow it. Without a doubt, President Obama and his administration is no different than Adolf Hitler and his SS regiment spying on your own people. President Obama is destroying our country, one constitutional amendment at a time. Impeach President Obama before it's too late, if it's not too late already. Gapland. Yeah, we all remember history class, don't we? Learning all about Adolf Hitler, the infamous illegal wiretapper. I guess that means that George W. Bush was no different than Adolf Hitler as well. A president who presides over a troubling secret surveillance program being no different than Hitler, after all. I guess it also means that all of the presidents of the United States who tolerated J. Edgar Hoover while he was doing essentially the same thing, albeit on a much smaller scale, but for even less defensible reasons, were also indistinguishable from the most reviled tyrant of the 20th century, whose legacy is defined, I remind you, by what a sneaky snoop he was. This is the third time I have written Mail Call, pointing out its lack of coverage of an important sporting event that occurred Memorial Day weekend in our city. The World Duck Pin Classic was held at Southside Bowl that weekend, and several local bowlers finished in the top ten. Over 150 bowlers from Canada and the U.S. participated. With the popularity of bowling generally in a valley, and duck pins in particular facing hard times, it would have been nice to see some write-ups on our local sports pages concerning this event. Hagerstown. I'm sorry that things are so bad right now for duck pin bowling, but since when is it the newspaper's job to promote unpopular sports? 
Plus, dude, this town has a professional baseball team that nobody gives a flying fuck about. Do you really expect frame-by-frame -frame coverage of a duck pin bowling tournament? It must not have been that important of a sporting event if it was held at Southside Bowl in Hagerstown. Or was that our consolation prize after our failed World Cup bid? I was just calling in about child support. There was in the paper about somebody paying child support to a known drug dealer. My thing is, I live with my fiance. We've been together for two years. We have a kid. He pays child support for two other kids, and they take almost half his paycheck every week. How's he supposed to support his other babies? Like, do I really have to go out and get child support too, just so I can get a little bit from him? Hagerstown, did either you or your fiance ever, for even a second, question the wisdom of having a child together knowing that he had two children already to support? I mean, did either one of you ever say to yourself, hey, he's got two kids to support already, and those child support payments take half his paycheck. Maybe we should use some birth control, or I don't know, maybe he should get a fucking vasectomy. So we don't find ourselves in the position of having to raise a child of our own that we can't afford. Whatever your answers to those questions would be, I feel sorry for all of the children involved in this scenario, because whether those concerns occurred to you or not, you're both fucking irresponsible idiots. I'm just curious. I don't want to come off as a cheapskate or a hard-hearted, uncaring person, but everywhere I shop, the grocery store, the vet, the gas station, the cleaners, and all restaurants, Upon paying my check, I'm asked if I would like to donate to someone or some organization in need. Isn't it enough that I'm spending all of my pittance of an income at these places, but they want more? Why don't these businesses take a dollar off of what I'm paying them to make their donations? Why do I have to be put on the spot? Enough is enough. Hagerstown. Just say no thank you. <laughs> That's that's what I do. If you can't afford to donate the dollar or however much to the charity they're collecting for, just politely decline when they bring it up. There's no shame in it. If you don't have the money, you don't have the money. But I don't see why you have to condemn the very act of soliciting funds for a good cause just because it makes you feel put on the spot. Hey, you know what? Stop upselling the Make-A-Wish Foundation, everyone. Yeah, it's making the customer at checkout, too, feel sheepish about it. Does that seem fair to you? I grew up going to the Baptist Church on the corner of Washington and High Street. I went there all my life just about, and I'm kind of ashamed of the Baptists and all the other people who claim to be Christians. If you are a true Christian, you will live by the rule of the book. The book says, forget the sin, but forgive the sinner. That means if you don't like the gay people, forgive them. Falling Waters, West Virginia. Uh, here's the problem with that, though. Yes, that attitude is definitely preferable to the more hardline, evangelical, all them fags is going to hell mindset, but it's still really, really judgmental and condescending to forgive someone for being gay. I mean, how would you feel if a gay man walked up to you and politely informed you that he'd forgiven you for being straight? Loved and respected? See, Maybe a good Christian who lives by the book would forgive someone for being gay, but a good, compassionate, accepting person should realize that being gay isn't something that needs to be forgiven, no matter what the book says. And finally, from Mercersburg, Pennsylvania. Outside Mercersburg, Pennsylvania, a homeowner is displaying our American flag with the utmost disrespect. A Confederate flag is flown at the top of their flagpole, and directly underneath it is the American flag being flown upside down. Many have fought and died for that freedom to display our American flag. Do not disrespect old glory, stained with the blood of those who died. We do not appreciate seeing our American flag being flown in such a manner. We are proud to be Americans and proud of our American flag. God bless the USA. Does respecting what the flag stands for matter at all? Because, look, I'm never particularly happy to see the Confederate flag flying anywhere, but I'd like to think I wouldn't be so disrespectful of the freedoms our nation's flag represents to expect a private citizen to take down his Confederate flag, or any other flag he happened to be flying. 
it might be upsetting to you to see the Confederate flag flown above the flag of the United States or to see Old Glory flown upside down, but the person who raised those flags like that had every right to do it. That freedom, the freedom of expression, even if the expression is repulsive to others, is one of the most basic, essential of all human rights. Isn't that what those men and women who died were fighting for? Mercersburg, you sound like you might have been a veteran yourself. Isn't that what you were fighting for? Or was it just to ensure the proper display of a pretty flag? Thanks for watching.